All right. Well, um, if any of you have been down to Nebraska Global for One Million Cups, you're already familiar with where we are. Um, here above uh, one of the somewhere between three and eight coffee shops that are on this corner. Um, uh, Beehive, uh, as we started it out, you know, one of the challenges that we definitely seen was that in the in the GIS world, geographic information systems world, there had been an entire industry built really in large part around one company who had incredible vision uh, back in the early 80s and had uh, incredible um, inertia into the wrong technologies and the wrong philosophies of thinking about it uh, going forward from there. Uh, owned by a single person who kind of defined the industry uh, but couldn't grow up with it. So I had grown really frustrated with what we had accomplished and I'd really been part of the implementation of what GIS was, which was to a lot of communities meant that they had spent a lot of money and what they had was a nice new map on the wall. And I really had hoped that it would go further than that. So as I was working uh, with another company doing development, we tried some experiments in storing spatial data a different way, um, just thinking of it as a different way. So when going and starting at Beehive in early 2011, uh, the GIS community had grown into, I guess, what I would call a throne. It was up on a throne, and if you wanted to interact with GIS, you went down the hallway to the left, and you talked to that one prick in the corner who was like, oh, you want something now? I'm just you know, really, I'm really important, and I've got these special tools. So we want to pull that out of there and get it down in the mud and get it to work. And some of these spatial technologies that were coming out from other organizations accidentally really fulfilled a lot of that. And we see a lot of that in, you've got uh, organizations like Microsoft or Google who are creating map technologies, and at no point do you ever hear them say the term GIS. They're just putting up freaking maps. And that's really kind of a refreshing look at it that helped us think about the management of infrastructure in a completely different way. So with Beehive, what we did was we built a framework and what that framework does is it allows us to configure an unlimited number of different feature types, um, and that's the things in the world. And then we can have an unlimited number of properties of those features that we can configure, and they can be all sorts of different data types. And one of those properties oftentimes is its spatial component, its geometry. Where is it? How big is it? Where does it sit in the world? We can also configure an unlimited number of events or event types that th things that have happened to this thing in the past or might happen to it in the future. And then we can also tie an unlimited number of attachments or documents either to the thing itself or to any of the events that are on that thing. Uh, then we, we add a little more detail into the events in that we have an engine where we can track the time that the effort on that event takes, we can track the materials that it consumes, we can track fees that are calculated as a result of you doing it. Um, and we add in the ability for this to be cloud enabled, which frankly, if you had asked me 10 years ago what that meant, or five years ago what that meant, I would have looked at it as a PR uh, stunt, but it's really been an interesting thing absorbing that and how that looks um, in the distribution of the Beehive uh, technologies. Um, field enabled needed the ability for them to go out in the field and deal with these infrastructures and also scalable because we knew that one of the intentions of Beehive was to take a platform and hit a lot of different industries, some very small and some very large, small data sets, large data sets. So in public sector, for example, right now, we have a city client that has a population of 1,500 and we have city population of 270,000. We have to hit that with pretty much the same framework. And then we take this engine that knows how to work really well and on top of that we build user interface that becomes an industry solution. And so the intention was that the engine would be a fairly generic but very powerful engine that just knew how to deal with things. Uh, primarily started out with physical infrastructure, but it's kind of accidentally gained the ability to do that with other abstract type of classes. So we take that framework now and we go into a vertical market. 
Uh, we started out in local government <clears throat> in part because um, of my background and just experience in that and knowing how we would take that kind of product into that market, uh, but partly because of some of the things about local government where very infrastructure heavy in utilities and, and infrastructure management. But the theory behind the framework is we can now stand it up in private utilities, or we can stand it up in commercial products, and we can stand it up in uh, construction industry. And these are all places that we have actually taken the framework into. Um, and I think we have a list of like 39 things that came up a whiteboard that says, you know, from brainstorming that says, here's all the places Beehive might be used. And that ranges from uh, really good ideas to really, really bad ideas. Um, but some oddities in there like porta potties, for example. Apparently, porta potty management is a big deal and there's big money, and apparently it gets screwed up all the time and they lose these things. Um, and they need to do maintenance on them. So there's little, little niche things in there, and there are bigger kind of industry plays in that. Out of that comes a user interface that may be specific to an industry. So right now we have uh, in the order of 20 modules that are for public sector, particularly uh, a lot of times towards municipal government, city government, but for managing different infrastructures. And it has a certain look and feel to it that is common across all these modules to them. But we also have other tools that use entirely different technologies on the front end, but they use the identical same back end. So uh, this is a tool in the commercial sector where we had somebody come to us with an idea about how fence uh, sales needed to change and the qualification of that. So we built this tool on top of the framework, and now that's soaked up through uh, various ways, and now it's got the attention of Home Depot, and they're looking at standardizing this as the way uh, of managing that stuff within their website. Equipment tracking, uh, railroad tracking, um, this is another completely different interface uh, from every other interface we've seen, but it still is on the same framework. This is Arbor Day's Energy Saving Trees program where they interface with very large utilities so that their clients go out and they can plant trees and it shows them where the savings is for wherever they plant it and they can move it where there's more savings and it disallows them from planting a tree where there's overhead lines or any other obstructions. And then that homeowner gets free trees sourced from Arbor Day the utility company pays for it. So this is actually a big revenue source for Arbor Day Foundation, but it's all built on top of the Beehive framework. So uh, lately we've been getting into, uh, as people use it in a broader sense, is more um, tools like spatial dashboards and where they can kind of look at the big view of what's happening in the world and see more details about that and drill into those activities. So this is some of the things that are currently being tracked in Beehive today uh, among the clients that we have. Um, and the intention, uh, depending on who you ask, uh, our primary intention should be getting more people to use these things. Where we get stretched is sometimes our intention seems to be to adding more boxes to this. So there's a presumption that Selling more of that is more profitable than adding more of that, but that's constantly a stretch that we have internally. So that is the short version of what we do, um, what the framework is about, and uh, we don't know what the final story is in terms of all the places we'd go with it. <laughs>